So you want to start collaborating in Microsoft Teams, but how do you create a team? Well, let's find out with the collaboration kernel. Microsoft Teams is a fantastic area to collaborate with your co-workers and not only your co-workers but also other people who you can federate in to Office 365 and share information. This could be customers or people outside the organization like trade partners. However, before you start all that really and having Microsoft Teams is one part of things, you really need to start looking at what a channel and a team is. Now, Teams are generally listed and highlighted in bold on the left hand side of the screen. Now a team will contain channels and by default you always get a general channel. Now as you can see in the Contoso Finance team there are several channels that have been added in. General and then you've got Finance Review, Governance and Compliance, Audit and the like. So things to remember. The first thing you see in a team will be the team name, Contorso Finance. A team will contain channels. And our channels can be related to pertinent information or acute information that you want to collaborate on. By default, you always get a general channel. And as you set up a team, you can also decide on what channels you want to put in. But we'll come to that a little bit later on. Joining and creating a team as you can see, you can create a team there, the first icon on the left. You can also join a team with a code as well. Now, joining a team with a code, we'll talk a little bit about later in this video. However, creating a team gives you several options. You can either build a team from scratch, which like I said, will give you the ability to name a team and gives you the general tab, or you can create a team from a previously created team. You may be the team's administrator and have done all this work with elaborate tabs and channel layouts. And you don't want all that work to go unheeded or wasted. So if you've got a set format that you want to create within Microsoft Teams, you can use this to use other channels like a sort of a template. So at least you get an awful lot of the information and the work that you've done used by every person or by every person who wants to create a team. You can set a policy. So for example, how do you want to create a team? You can create a team from another team like I mentioned and once you click on that you get a long list of teams that you can select as a potential template. So we're going to select one, Contoso Finance. When you select that, Microsoft Teams then uses that team to create a team based on that particular team. And I've realized I've just said team many times, but it's very important to try and understand. You can create a team based on a team template. Anyway, once you get your head around that, that's fine. Now, once you've done that, you move on to the next section where you're given a choice of private, public, or organizational wide. Now, organizational wide teams will generally not be exceptionally collaborative in my experience. And what I mean by that is, is that, well, if you wanna set up a team for everybody within a company and say you're a large enterprise or even a small business, then everybody is gonna have access to that team. And you've really got to nail down the settings and we'll come to the settings a little bit later on in this video. But an org wide team would typically be something like a HR announcements team where you want everybody in there and you wanna use team as your primary source of collaboration. There shouldn't be too many of these within your team organization because the overhead would be huge, everyone would have access to them. Anyway, creating a private team is typically what you're going to be doing because you want to you want to moderate who has access to it. So we're going to call our team the collaboration kernel and in the description below we're going to give people a little bit of a heads up of what this team is all about. It's all very well calling it something grandiose and fantastic but if it's not set in context then you're not using Teams to its full advantage. So here we go, a team to help you use the collaboration tool set of Office 365 Productivity Suite. Excellent, there you are. At least people generally will know what this team is all about. As you mentioned, we've called it the collaboration kernel. You then get a lovely icon of people looking very happy, and then you're prompted to add members into this team. 
Now, membership is created upon the team at the moment in Microsoft Teams and granular permissions to other channels are not yet with us, but they are in development, so we hear. So we're gonna add a few people and that can be done either by adding a group name within Office 365 or individuals. Now we're gonna add a few individuals just for ease of access. So we've got a wide a, a range of people with different roles in this particular team. All oh, this is great. So what we're gonna do now, add, should we add somebody else? We could do, but how, what do you wanna add them as? Now typically, right, everyone by default is a member. You, as the team manager or team creator, would be an owner. The owner is always the person who creates the team. But typically, you would might want to have somebody else as an owner. You may be out one day, you might be off sick, off a trade conference, that sort of thing, out of the office. And typically then, you want somebody else to back you up. Now, usually in large corporations, this may be someone from the enterprise assistant organization, or just another team owner that you trust or is on message or your number two second in command. But it's generally good practice to have a second owner assigned to every team. That way then if there are requests for people to join the team and you're not in, and if that person is, then they can service any requests to join that team or if people have any questions and need additional content. So we've assigned Deborah Berger, um, an admin assistant, as the second owner. Great. And there's our team, the collaboration kernel. And you can see it's defaulted with the general tab with conversations, files, and wiki at the top. Now, if we go on to the settings, we wanna manage that team. This is typically what we get. Now, as you can see, I am the owner. Deborah is also an owner, and we added that in the last step. No dramas there. These are the people who are gonna rule our team. Now, clicking on members and guests, you'll typically now see all the people who are assigned as members and are a member of this particular team. Now you see we've got three people there. Now, as members, they have a certain limit on what they can do within the team, but as owners, you are all powerful. Clicking on pending requests will show you requests of people who wish to join your team. And as owners, you can grant them access. Clicking on channels gives you the ability then to add quickly from this one particular section on setup, new channels. Now, as I said, channels always sit within a team. Now our channel, we're gonna call it MS Teams, and we're gonna put a description in there about MS Teams driven discussions. And we're gonna make this automatically shared and shown to the current people in the team, right? So it's gonna appear as a channel list straight at the top. Now, sometimes when you've got multiple channels, some channels will be hidden because typically you only see four or five within the, the Teams list. And as your usage of Teams expands, then the more Teams you're gonna get, the more Teams you're gonna get, and that left-hand bar is really gonna start filling up. Now, they always say that a picture is processed 60,000 times than actual text. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at changing the icon within our team. Now you go to, click on the top of the team where it says the collaboration kernel, make sure it's the top. We're gonna upload a picture. We're gonna pick an icon for the collaboration kernel and here it is, use a low, low res one. Upload it, save it and there you go, a few seconds later, the collaboration kernel icon is now assigned to the collaboration kernel team. And by scrolling down the list, I can see, oh, there's the icon I want, thank you very much. Just imagine having um, a customer that you're dealing with. You could use the customer logo as the logo for the team. So people, for example, would instantaneously know that as per their logo and what they see in the real world. It could be, you know, Another icon, for example, for HR, it's a little bit better than the initials that Microsoft Teams gets you, gives you anyway. Moving on to settings, you can see all the different member permissions you can allow people to do. Allow them to create and update channels. How collaborative do you want your people to be within the team? Do you want to stifle it all back? Is it an organizational channel, organizational wide channel, where you want it controlled just by a few people and given it for information? In which case then, you would turn an awful lot of these off. 
as you can see, you've got anyone can post messages. Well, that's great in a private team because you're giving people the access and you want them to collaborate. If you've got an organizational wide team, like I mentioned, like a HR team, when you're using it for information only, then typically perhaps only owners should be able to post within this team like a sort of a broadcast message, but you want everybody to know about it. And that's typically where I think the organizational wide team, when you create one, would be. However, we've created a private one, so you can be granular or just allow people to collaborate willy-nilly on this one particular team. Now, personally, I think with private teams, you're inviting the people in there. You want to enforce collaboration. You want to encourage collaboration. So what you want to be doing here is allowing all these options, but it's down to a personal preference and it's also down to your own social collaboration policy within your company. Now, guest permissions. As it's a private team, right? You want to be very, very careful about what you want to allow guests to be able to do. And do you want them to enable channel creation? Do you want to allow creating and updating of channels? Well, this is your team and you're inviting them in as a guest. If they wanted them to do anything else other than this, then you would add them as a member. But this might be, say, for a company or outside of your organization or a partner from your partner network. And all depends what you want to do, but it's all configurable here. Also, App Mentions is a very powerful tool within Microsoft Teams when making announcements. For example, in the chat, you may be sharing a document and you might want everybody in the team to say, hey, I've just done this great document on Microsoft Teams. I'll do an at mention of the team and away you go and everyone will know about it. Now, the team code, you may realize that this has been there from when we started creating a team and there it is. Join a team with a code. Now, what this means is, is that you can generate a one-time code or a code assigned to that team, share it via other perhaps conventional sharing policies like instant messaging or, um, for example, I am in a meeting, an announcement in a meeting, all that sort of thing. And you can generate this code from this particular section within the settings. There's our code. Now, you can reset that code to a different one to get a different code if you're getting people joining who you don't want or you've made a mistake and sent it to somebody who you don't want to join that meeting. It's all configurable here. Clicking on full screen gives you a nice big picture of the code. So if you're presenting this within a meeting environment, within a Teams meeting or a Skype meeting, for example, you can show this on the screen and say to everyone, hey, type in this code, you will join this team. You can also copy this and like I say, send it out via chat you can send it out via Skype IM, you can send it out via whatever format you want to, whether that be Yammer, whether that be Outlook, or your mail client. And then people will then type in that code, click join team, and that will take a little bit of the pressure off the owners because they won't have to authorize all those people who want to join the team. Be very careful with this though, because you could suffer with an awful lot of people who are just hanging on to meetings, who generally, oh, I'll join that team, thank you very much. And it might not be very appropriate. And it's all down to how you want to promote your team within your company. So basically what the, what the, the code does, it circumvents the part of um, joining a team where the owner has to grant you access. That effectively what it is. A very powerful tool, and it's more for the convenience of the admin owner. Now, fun stuff. Be very careful with fun stuff and the use of GIFs and stickers and emojis. It all depends in what context of your team is. Now, look at it this way. If you're sharing your team with an external vendor, perhaps you don't want people using GIFs, pictures of dancing cats and what have you, to be used within a business team. If you are, for example, just doing a private team like what we are to talk and collaborate about Microsoft Teams and how best to use it, then why not have GIFs and interject a little bit of fun into what could generally be a very dry topic. And let's face it, IT can be very dry at times. So here we are, we're in our general channel and I'm gonna say welcome. And I'm gonna put an at mention, but instead of using individuals, for example, Deborah and all the rest of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing out the name 
of the team. So I typed in the, and automatically the collaboration kernel has come up. So everybody will say, will see that message, welcome. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna add a little funky GIF. And this GIF is gonna add a little bit of fun straight in to um, the chat. So using the popular culture, it'll present me with a number of GIFs that are flagged to the word welcome. We're gonna scroll all the way down there. We can see Tony Stark or Robert Downey Jr. Jr. with a little thing underneath it saying, welcome. Well, Marvel Endgame is out in the cinema. It's a quite contextual. Um, popular culture is rife amongst everybody now within, um, within IT and within organizations. Let's use that. And we're gonna send it. Now you'll notice there's a little icon saying the team, the collaboration kernel, has been mentioned. So everybody within that team will have an announcement now that says, hey, the collaboration kernel has made an announcement in the chat, you may wanna check it out. Now, clicking on the ellipses, you can then mark it in red, you can use the immersive reader, get a link, send a link round to this one particular message. For example, it could not be a GIF, it could be a document. You can also edit it. If, for example, oh, perhaps I should have said collaboration kernel team, and then click on the tag, now this won't notify everybody that it's been edited. The notification's already gone out, but it just gives you a little chance, for example, to edit something if perhaps you've made a mistake or you think, well, perhaps that GIF is not really appropriate or I wanna add a document to that as well. Now you can also add videos, you can add pictures, documents in the productivity suite. You know, you can attach files, whatever you wanna do. So that was fun stuff. So, you know, allow MEMS to be uploaded, enable stickers and MEMS. It all depends what you want to do. And like I say, it all depends in what context your Microsoft team has been created in. If you're sharing with partners, for example, I suggest you turn this off. If you are sharing internally and it's quite a liberal group, you know, you're all friends or you're all co-workers, then by all means, I think, use it because it adds, takes away a little bit of the dryness. So adding in applications, clicking on the apps tab within the settings function will then take you to the amount of third party applications that can be integrated in with Microsoft Teams. This is where I think Microsoft Teams and all the social collaboration tools are really playing a blinder. It's really a good thing. And you think about it, you can add in surveys, you can add in YouTube, you can add in um, RSS feeds. All these things help embellish the information that you're getting within your team and to allow people to access the information without going out to intranet sites or out to the internet, wasting time looking for information. You can surface that information into a way that is palatable and consumable to the people who are in your team. Now, all that being said, these integrations have to exist within your organization. Things like um, Google Analytics, and Zendesk, for example, or Facebook could all be added in. For example, here we are, Zendesk, we'll have some of that. We'll set it up in a tab. Um, and if you've got all the information to allow you to connect to Zendesk, then you can set that up in this particular area. It'll be added into a tab, into a channel, channel of your choosing. Now we've selected general, you would type in your subdomain and your Zendesk configuration information into there. You would then say save, and that would then be populated directly as a tab in the general channel. And the tabs, for example, conversations, files, wiki, see where you see the plus, then you would get something at the top there. Now, it's very important when setting this up, you have the information, for example, for Zendesk. However, clicking on the ellipses, the three icons in the left-hand side will also allow you to pick up apps as well. So many different ways of getting the same thing inside your team. Clicking on add to a team or chat. We've selected YouTube because it's nice and easy. We're gonna type in the collaboration kernel. You can then click install. Right, okay, no problem. We're installing YouTube into the collaboration kernel team. You can then search YouTube to surface particular information at a tab. Now it could be a channel name like the collaboration kernel. Now I've only just started out, for example, so I doubt I'm gonna be ranking very high in YouTube and lo and behold, no, I'm not. But if I'd be a bit more specific, 
for example, like for example, I did a video on Microsoft Teams commands and can they save you time? The shortcut commands typed into the command bar. Well, MS Team commands, click on search, and I'm ranking at number two on Google, which is really good, and number two on YouTube. So I can select that, and then that particular video from YouTube is presented as a tab in the general channel at the top of the screen. And it's a good way of surfacing information to people that you want them to look at. For example, think about um, a healthcare environment and you need people, hey, there's a new way of putting people in the recovery position and there's a YouTube video on it and we're gonna put that in. Excellent way of training, excellent way of using multimedia within Microsoft Teams to get your message across. It's not all about sharing documents. Sharing multimedia within this collaborative hub I think is absolutely fantastic. So that was a brief look at how to create Microsoft Teams within the Microsoft Teams application. Hope you enjoyed it. Check back again, like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing and check back for more videos in the series. I've been the Collaboration Colonel and I'll see you next time.